What's up, guys? It is Mark Russell. It is a rainy day outside, but today it is wonderful inside. So it's a great time to talk about proper pruning cuts. So I'm holding in my hand an example of what never, ever, ever, ever to do. So uh, let's, before we get into this, I just have a lot of people talk to me a lot of times about, hey, how do I prune this tree and what are the angles and how do I do it? So we're going to jump right in. We're going to talk about angles and a few of the rules that you do that you have to look at um, when you're doing different types of pruning cuts. So the first thing is let's talk about the branch collar. I remember in 97 or 98, I was actually at American Chainsaw buying chains, chainsaw and gear from Sheila and Mark who are still there. Uh, shout out to them. They've been there for so long. And so it's amazing to me, actually. And I remember someone saying, yeah, you got to cut outside the branch collar. I was standing right at the front desk. And I looked at him. I was like, the branch collar? This is in 97. Okay, so let's talk about it. We didn't have the internet back then, so we couldn't just show the branch collar. So this is very important. You guys are ready to see. Here we go. Magic of the internet. So this is a proper, um, let, let, we'll zoom in here. Okay, let's see if we can open this in a new tab. Okay, so this is a proper pruning cut. It's a three cut method. So the reason you do cut number one goes right here underneath, okay? Cut number two is from the top down to the bottom. The reason for cut number one is it prevents a peel from happening, okay? And cut number three, once you get all the weight off, you cut right there. That's proper three point pruning or three cut pruning. Okay, let's also talk about the collar. Okay, so here is a nice um, example. So the what you never guys want are right angles, okay? Do you notice right here, check, um, this is a good example, but I'm gonna find a better example. Okay, check this out, uh, right here. This is a good example. We'll open this one in a new tab. What you never want is right angles. And the reason you don't want right angles is because if you have right angles on the stub that you left, it means you left too much. So with the magic of the internet, I'm gonna show you something right here. And that is, if you notice the angle, hold on, right here, let's see if it does it. The angle right here is from there to there, okay? That's not a right angle. From here to here is open. I don't know whether it's acute or obtuse. I think it's acute. What? Yeah, I think, okay, or maybe it's obtuse, but the point is, is it's open. Now, if your angle came here and went like that, uh-oh, two big problems there and there. Okay, here's the reason why, okay? What you have, I'm going to hit, let's see, hit that. What you have is you have, actually, I'm going to go back. You have sap flowing right up here, okay? and out to the branch to feed the uh, for free feed and promote the leaf growth, okay? So what happens is if you make a pruning cut right here or right here, what happens is a lot of times the sap is not gonna go out there. So it'll stop and it'll go this and it'll just keep on, it'll come right up here and then it'll keep going up, okay? So then what happens right with all this material is you end up getting decay. Okay, speaking of decay, um, let's get back to, uh, you end up getting decay. Hello, look at that big old chunk. Or is everybody seeing that? That is someone, in all reality, this, what I think happened is someone came along and pruned this, hit this, which you're never supposed to, oh, I got off branch collar. We're going to talk about that. Let's keep on on the branch collar subject. Sorry, you guys. Okay, here we go. Back to the branch collar. Hold on. Okay, so we talked about the idea of never wanting right angles. And once again, see, because this comes up, that's not actually a right angle because we're looking at it the weird. This is not, this is proper pruning right here. Okay, we'll go back to this, hit, kill that. Let's see. So more than anything, let's switch this around a little bit. See, this is proper. So it comes out right at the base. You want to cut right there at the base here. This is the uh, branch bark ridge right outside. Boom. Okay. And this is a dead branch. And this is exactly what we're talking about. You want to get it as close to, guys, check that out, as close to 
this rounded edge. Okay, we're just going to jump into the meat of this real quick because this is really what I wanted to talk about. This is what spurred the video. Okay, so anytime you are pruning, anytime you're pruning um, a situation where you have a dead cut, okay, this came from the ground um, of us pruning a tree that had been previously pruned. And I saw this and I was like, oh my gosh. And I actually had to call my climber. I was like, did we do this? And he's like, no, dude. Obviously, we wouldn't have done that because of the work. So let's let's take a look. So specifically, let me cut to the chase. Anytime you make a pruning cut, you have something called CODIT, compartmentalization of decay in trees, C-O-D-I-T. Okay, it's theorized, maybe not proved, but Dr. Chiago um, came up with it. And effectively, what it means is that anytime there's decay in a tree, okay, what happens is layers inside the tree will, um, trees, trees, and you guys have probably heard me talk about it, the inside of a tree is like hair or fingernails, okay, you see that right there, watch this, okay, this is going to be kind of gross, okay, that's so gross, I know some of y'all are like freaking out, but other tree guys don't care, okay, watch this, okay, see this right here? Do you see that? Here comes a fingernail. You see it? It's disgusting. Okay. Now, imagine pulling that little fingernail off and going, oh, yeah, I can attach it. Watch this. Oh, wait. Hold on. It didn't attach. I need a Band-Aid. I'm going to be able to attach it, right? It doesn't happen. It's never going to happen. Why? Because fingernails are dead cells. That was my trash can. Okay. Once you clip your hair, hair is dead cells. Well, guess what? the inside of a tree is dead cells, okay? It's used for storage of the tree's nutrients, sugars, water, et cetera, with uh, cells called ray cells, which will bring that nutrients in and out. But typically, um, the, the movement of material through a tree is typically up and down from the roots up to the, up to the leaves. Okay, so anytime, so the system is enclosed, right? It's like a big pack of straws. Anytime a little bit of bark gets penetrated then and some bacteria gets in there, it starts killing those cells off and it tries to wrap around, okay, wrap around and compartmentalize. Oh my gosh, dude, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> dude, stinking Corsair gaming keyboard and I'm dripping bark all in it. <laughs> Let's scoot the mic back, Russell. Don't be wrecking the nice cherry red keys. Okay. So the point being, and hear me on this, when we start code it, C O D I T, it creates layers inside this rounded area is comprising layers that are preventing this decay and trying to lock it in all around here. Okay. Well, the problem is, is each one of these layers goes in and it sets chemical layers up inside the tree to prevent that decay coming out. When someone comes along and makes a cut, then what happens is you have the mirror image of this coming off the tree, but now all those nice little layers that were there and are now gone, okay? Now it has a very, very hard time resetting up those layers, okay? It takes a lot of energy to set up coated layers takes a lot of energy to set up coated layers. See all this? Someone had gone in there and pruned that off. Not a good practice. Instead, the proper way would have been, oh, I wish I could show you uh, the cut that I made on my oak tree outside about four or five years ago. And I took time. There was a crossing branch, right? It crossed. It came across like whatever, one into another. And I took time with my saw and I was just went, bup, 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 and it had already started to grab in, right? This branch is two trunks and a branch that came across one. And the trunk was wrapping around this branch and it was like inside it. And so I cut it, pruned it on this side, pruned it over there. And as it came across, I had to like cut it on this side and I literally had to grind some of it out. Okay. Cause it was interfering. It's called crossing and interfering. And so I had to get in there, but I was really careful because I knew as I'm pruning and I'm grinding that thing out of there, you do not want to nick the callus area, C-A-L-U-S area, because if you do, you interrupt the layers. So the proper way, guys, to do this 
would have been to come in here and try to grind out as much with the tip of your saw without touching that. That's the point, okay? That you never do. Do not do that. We were cleaning up after someone who had pruned this tree ahead of time before us. And when we saw it, we we're like, oh man, that's not cool. Okay. So the problem is, is look at what happened. The tree had this much area to close up and you could have just gone in there and given it a little bit of a fighting chance and at least given it the, the benefit of however many years it took probably, well, you can actually count. Let's see. How many years do you guys think that that has worth of growth? There's going to be some, and yes, it is true. Um, you know, I don't even know how many years that is. Let's see. Uh, I don't know if you can count layers in there or not. Oh, yeah, you can. Oh, yes, you can. Look at that close. Let's see if it gets focused. Those are all years. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's like at least six years worth of healing. Let's see, at least one, oh man, it's more than that. That's probably seven, eight years worth of healing, nine years to wrap around that. I think this is called something like the horn or something. Okay, so the big point of this is anytime you have a dead stub, try to grind it out, okay? Try to grind it out. God, we're at 11 minutes, but I'm gonna talk to you guys about angles because we talked about angles, so we said we were gonna talk about them. So let's talk a few more things about angles. I tried to explain this on the um, on the uh, on the Japanese maple, but let's talk about a crown reduction angle cut. Let's see if we can find that real quick. Okay, if we can do one of that. Oh, sorry. Okay, here we go. C R O W N R E D U C T I O. Here's those cherry keys. They're awesome. Okay, crown reduction pruning cut. Let's see. Is this it? That's it. Um, so, but that doesn't, it doesn't give us, okay, crown reduction is not topping. Crown reduction is taking, uh, this could be a decent example. Crown reduction is taking, effectively what you're doing is you're pulling the, the, the distance off of it, but you're not just doing a hat rack job like this. Okay, so what you do is you come in here and, and, and there's a rule for it, okay? Right here, let's see. Um, the Oh, here. So, for uh, okay, so here are some of the rules real quick. Number one, the one that you leave, i.e. keep this side, needs to be 50% or, or bigger in diameter than the one that you cut. So if this is two inches, this has to be one inch. Okay, what you don't want is to take off one that's like three inches and then leave a little twig. I see guys do that sometimes. I'm like, guys, that's topping. That's not a crown reduction cut. Sometimes, guys, during um, sometimes during triage after an ice storm or something, the, the tree simply does not give you an option like on that maple that I pruned the other day. I, I couldn't hit that 50% and keep that uh, the client's uh, driveway and uh, sidewalk clear like I wanted to. It just didn't lend itself to give me to be able to follow that rule. You can't do it always, but what you don't ever do is like go up to this tree that's perfectly in the middle of a front yard and they're like, you know, pull down the size. And first off, that's a horrible thing to do. Um, and, uh, and then just randomly willy nilly give it a, a stinking, uh, pollarding job unless they're looking for pollarding, which of course will stress a tree. So so first off, 50%. Secondly, follow the general angle. This is where we're going to get the pin out, guys. I want you to check this out. Look, the general angle on this, on the one that you're leaving is like that. So typically, I would go, this is a little outside that, but um, like what you, again, what you don't do is leave that, okay? Because watch this, guys. Let me hit the erase button. What? Oh, am I still drawing? Yeah, I'm still drawing. What, why you don't leave this right here, and this is important, watch this, sap flow coming up here, where's it gonna go, guys? It's gonna go straight out there. If you leave an angle like this, what happens, uh, I wish I had a good example, but this stub will die out, This will, and this stub right here dies out, and then this whole area 
will start to um, create exactly right here. Oh, am I even on anymore? Um, hold on. What will happen is it'll start to create the rounding effect, okay? The, the, the callus, okay? So, so follow, let's go back to the drawing board. Okay, so follow this angle. Do not leave a stub right outside the branch bark ridge. Make that cut. Okay, few other examples of pruning cuts. I'm going to just spur my mind. Let's just look around, erase, go back to here. Let's just talk about this a little. I'm going to ramble a little bit for you guys. Um, so this is a crown reduction cut. And what... Um, Okay, so what you don't, like, look at this. Cut along des uh, designated line. Okay, that's a great cut. Maybe it's not exactly like this. Maybe it's a little out. Depends, because if, you're, if, you're, if your branch was, like, coming out more like that, um, then you would probably end up following more of a line. You probably would not, you know, do that. Do that. Um, you would probably follow more of a line. But if it's a super high angle, Maybe like coming up like this. Yeah, you probably like if it was very narrow going in like that. Let me erase all this. If you had the branch coming in and then coming out like that. Um, yeah, you probably would not make your pruning cut even like that or even worse, like follow it. You wouldn't come way down like that. So in that case, it does, you know, like on those super high angle branches, you would come out a little bit. Okay, so let's keep on uh, looking through here and just see if anything sparks the old Russell uh, memory. Uh, okay, guys, I'm having fun with this. This is, um, I have been enjoying it. And by the way, if you guys ever have a question, oh, be sure to like this and subscribe and share it. I do want to start growing some people on this channel just a little bit. Um, okay, I think that's going to be it for this. Above all else, the point was they had drop crotch pruning. That's, uh, see, once again, you know, that's what we're looking at. Um, let's see a couple of these. Oh, that's some gun stock thing. Um, yeah, see, like on a super high angle, you definitely would not follow that line way down. You would come across. Let's see, is there anything else? 50% or bigger. Oh, this is a good example of uh, what happens when you leave a stub on a tree. That's a great example. I wish it was zoomed in. Let's see if we can find that. DEA. Uh, let's see if old artificial intelligence will figure it out. Yeah, there's a there's an example of a knot hole. Is that? Yeah, there's that, there's that healing uh, wood right there. Let's just go keep on doing uh, a little bit more. Here is a branch. It looks like was improperly pruned. It's going to start healing off somewhere right around there is where it looks like. It'd be pretty cool, Google, if you would give me some larger sizes. Okay, let's just look a little bit more. I mean, like right here on this particular tree, I would cut, I would end up pruning this. Um, and you got to remember, this is another thing that's really important. You don't want to prune like it, the, the bigger, like if you pruned right there, your face cut would literally, like if you take that out to there, I'm, I'm doing, I don't, okay, you do dot, 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 dot to show you guys a side view, dot, 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 oh, dot, whatever. Your side view is you're creating this big gaping. If you spun the tree around, you'd be creating this monster face cut. Whereas if you just do that, ah, that right there, your face cut is going to be dot, dot, dot from here. Not even, not even. It's going to be so much smaller. Your face cut would be like this big, okay? Compared to like that big. Like that's so much more area that a tree has to heal compared to this little area that it has to compartmentalize and close up. So you always, that's, by the way, that's the reason you go up a, a little further. This tree makes it super easy to understand where to make that cut. Let's just see. Here's a couple, let's see. Let's see if this is, ah, I wish we could spin it. The top looks good. That may be a little bit too uh, low. 
That looks like a really big cut. This looks a little better. Look at that nice forming there. Let's see. Way too big. This is obviously when a um, someone took a codominant off. And sometimes, guys, you have to take the codominant because like an ice storm broke it or something. That's a good uh, clean uh, healing that's continuing to happen. By the way, guys, um, pruning like regarding um, don't ever pack cement into your uh, pruning into cankers. And spraying them really does no good. It can lock in bacteria unless you have oak wilt around. This is a good healing. Look, it's starting to close up. Um, this is starting to close up. Maybe that was a little too close, honestly. It looks like, see how flat that is right there? And then, uh, let's see, what, what happened? That looks, look at that. Look at that rounding. Okay, so these are all pruning cuts that are healing. And see, this one right here was trying to do that. And it had it was forcing either this to decay or this to grow all the way around it, which is a ton of energy. So it's all about maintaining energy, you guys, helping the tree maintain and allocate its energy toward um, the most useful place possible. Okay, that's it, guys. If you like this pruning video, share it with your gardening friends, with your tree lover friends. Um, I've done my best to kind of give you some thoughts. Uh, and other than that, if you have a question, please feel free to give me, uh, give me a, send me an email, shoot me a video. I'd be more than happy to help you, uh, you know, answer any questions that you got. Comment below, and once again, share and like. And if you're in the Atlanta area, North Atlanta, uh, we do tree health care, root uh, aeration, pruning removal. We're ISA certified, tree risk assessment qualified. So we'd love to help you in the North Atlanta area. Okay, you guys, take it easy. Bye bye.